There we are. Okay. Good evening, everybody. We are talking about organizing all the homeschool stuff tonight. There's a lot of it and it's in our house. <laughs> so um, hopefully we'll be able to share some tips and things that have worked um, in our spaces. And I know there's different things that work in different spaces. So we'll hopefully hear from different moms and what's worked. But before we do that, let's um, open in prayer. And this prayer is for the true spirit of motherhood. So let's begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mary, my mother, join me now in a mother's prayer that through the special graces of motherhood, our little children may instruct us in the ways of God, that their innocent eyes may speak to us of the spotless holiness of Jesus, that their open smiles may continually remind us of the great love God has for his creatures, that their helplessness may teach us the unbounded power of God and that their first feeble efforts to speak may tell us of God's wisdom. Pray with us now that their complete trust in us may lead us to a like confidence in God, and that their simple affection for us may bring us to a greater love for him. And so in all these things, may we grow in a greater appreciation of our holy motherhood, and day by day reflect more faithfully the radiant beauty manifest in your motherhood, which God gave us as the model of all Christian motherhood. Um, awesome. So we need all the help we can get. And Our Lady is a great place to go for that. We like to turn to her and ask her to, I, gen I generally, my prayer to her is just please fill in where I can't and where I mess up because you're the perfect mother and I'm not. Um, but homeschooling stuff. So I will just share a little bit, and like I said um, in my introduction before we started, that I will try to temper myself and not get too carried away, but um, I love organizing, and I love organizing all the stuff. It's one thing I'm relatively good at, but um, there's lots of things I'm not good at. So uh, the first thing we were going to talk about a little bit is like where the stuff is, and I think that's important to consider. One of the things that where we've homeschooled, we've homeschooled in four different, five different houses, I said four, five different houses. And I found that more important than where we do the homeschool work is where I keep the homeschool stuff. It all has to be in a space or I lose it or get distracted or waste time running from place to place. Um, so a few homes, we've been able to have a homeschool room that's dedicated where everything is. Um, a few homes, it's been a few homeschool bookshelves or a closet that was where I put all the stuff. So I always recommend finding a kind of one place to try to keep most of that stuff that's easily accessible, of course, but that it can all kind of be there. Otherwise you're running, you know, the art supplies are over there and the pencils are over there and the books are over there. Um, right now we have, so my kids are uh, finishing up 11th grade, 9th grade, third grade and first grade. So what's happened in my home as we, my kids have gotten older is that we do still have a homeschool space, but only the kids that need to be with me all the time are in that homeschool space. So that's my first grader and my third grader. And the teenagers, the high schoolers are, have, are at their desk in their room at this point for most of the day. Um, they will come out to do things like online classes or use the DVD player and things like that in the shared space. But most of the time they're off on their own. Um, but I still keep all the resources that I need in our homeschool room. Um, each of the teenagers has a crate, you know, one of those milk crates that they keep in their room that has all their school books in it. Um, for a while, my son, my freshman was working downstairs because there's a comfier chair than at his desk and he liked the recliner for school. And I was like, sure. And so he carried his crate down and just kept it there for a while. He's back in his room now. Um, and then I have one of those shelves that has like the cubes, you know, the cubbies. And so each of my kids um, has a cubby for their books that keeps what they need um, each day. And then I have designated shelf that's like all my teacher manuals that I need to access in a given day. Um, as far as school supplies, I've gone through the caddy on the table, I've gone through the drawered carts, I've gone through all things, but the thing that's worked best in our house is a pencil box for each kid, and they just have all their supplies in one place, and then if they can't find a pencil, it's because they didn't put it back in their box and they have to go hunt for one. Um, 
So that's worked for us as far as organizing the school supplies and the books that they need every day. Um, I do like things to be relatively portable. So like my, um, the teenagers have that crate. We do a morning basket, which is like a circle time all together. Um, most mornings, and I have all of those books actually in a basket that I could, theoretically it's a big basket with handles that I could carry somewhere else if I need to. For example, when your husband suddenly works from home and needs complete silence in the room next to where you usually do morning baskets, you carry the basket upstairs to a bedroom and everybody joins in the kid's bedroom and does your time there. So um, that has been helpful in a pinch is to find some portable things that I can move around. Um, but we do clean up our school area every day. I require the kids to put back their own things because they're old enough to do that now. And I make sure that I put my manuals and things back um, where they go. I actually also have crates behind my desk on the floor turned sideways. And that's where my, some of my teacher manuals are because I grade at my desk. So I just grab the teacher manual and turn around and use it and put it right back. Again, I don't like walking around because that just wastes time and I get distracted. <laughs> um, but there's a lot of books and we have a lot of shelves. I know Mimi said you just got new shelves and I need more shelves. Everybody needs more shelves. Um, and we have gone through lots of iterations of organizing our books. Um, currently, what's working is that the curriculum we're currently using is in our schoolroom with the manuals for that, for that year. So I have everything we would need in that school year in our school room. Anything that's curriculum that I have that a kid's not just gonna pick up and use, not like a fun book, but just like manuals are in my garage. And I have a shelf like all along one wall of the garage. Um, so I can get those out of the house because I don't need to see them. I'm not using them this year. Um, and then we have in the school room, we have a history shelf, a religion shelf, a science and math shelf so that the kids kind of know where to put back the nonfiction books. And our um, fiction books are kept downstairs. And my goal has always been to organize my books in a way that my kids could put them back properly at a young age. So the bottom shelf is the board books, then the paperback books, then the hardback books, and then the chapter books and the high school literature up top. So it's all they don't have to figure out what goes on what shelf too much. It's just, oh, this is a paperback. It goes there. Um, and one of the board book shelves now is a reader shelf because I have a reader again. So we're shoving all those readers in there. Um, so that's how I've done it right now. There was a time when I had one of those apps. I forget which app I used and I scanned all of our books and it was glorious. And then we moved and we purged a lot of books and we gained a lot of books and I didn't keep it up. And so I didn't spend the time to do it again. Um, does that mean that sometimes I purchase duplicate books? Yes, <laughs> it happens all the time. Um, it's not like a ton of duplicate books, but there are, I have a stack of probably five or six books that I've found in the past couple of weeks as I'm cleaning up that I'm like, oh, I have two copies of that. I don't need two copies of that. Um, so some people really like to have a system to keep track. Um, some of the books, like if there's a series that I know we like and I'm trying to accumulate, I will keep a list in my phone of what books I'm looking for. Um, especially if I'm looking for them used, like the Saint books for a while, it was, you know, I wanted to get all the vision books and all the wind out books. And I had some, so I would put in my phone, which ones I was looking for. So if I saw one at a sale or something, I need to grab that. Or if there's a particular history book or things that I'm kind of keeping an eye out for, I might keep a list of that. Um, and then the papers um, are kind of an ongoing thing. Again, different times, different seasons. When my kids do their work for the day, um, and it's something that I need to grade or review. And usually I just need to put a check mark if I need to see that they've done it. I have a turn in box on my desk. It's one of those baskets. And they put papers and workbooks and anything that they're supposed to turn in on a daily basis. And I look at that every night and return it back to their crate or their cube. Um, if it, they're done with it and it's something I took a grade and I recorded it or I didn't grade it because they're younger, I don't do grades till high school. Um, then I have a big under the bed box for each school year that I just throw everything in. And then at the end of the year, I'm supposed to sit down and sift through that and take out most of it and get rid of it and keep the rest of it. And I said supposed to because I have three boxes right now <laughs> from three different years that I probably need to sit down and take care of. Um, but that helps because 
I like taking all the wonderful drawings that they give me and saying, I'm going to put this in the box. And then I don't, I'm not throwing it away, but I'm just putting it in the box to save. And then at the end of the year, one night when they're not around, I can watch a movie and sort through that. That's how it's worked in the past. Um, and then um, as far as workbooks and things like that, um, as they finish them, I will usually tear out the pages that I think are most important for me to keep. And then I'll recycle them or give them to them to tear apart. My kids like tearing apart their workbook. They think that's just entertaining to make confetti out of them. Um, but I will tear out like the test pages or some samples of their writing or things so that I can kind of have a record for myself. Now, all of that said, I live in a state where no record keeping is required of me. Um, so I don't have to keep anything, but I do like to keep a little bit from each year um, both for my own, just being able to see, look, we did this and they, they did a good job. And sometimes I need to look back and say, oh, did they finish that? I don't remember. Um, but also because always that just in case, right? So if someone were to come knock on my door and say, she's doing a bad job of homeschooling her kids, I could say, oh, come on, look, I I've done all this and I have these past several years of things. So everybody has to kind of figure out their zone on that. Um, there's lots of ideas by the way, on keeping work and preserving work or having the year, like looking back at work. I actually just wrote an article on that that's going to go up in the next week or two, but it's with the editor, so I don't know when it's coming out. But, you know, people are scanning them or taking pictures of them, making photo books. You can do some fun things to preserve your kids' work and still get rid of the stuff because it is overwhelming when you have four kids and they're doing all their school at home and you have all that stuff. So I do recommend finding some way to purge periodically. So that's kind of the main part of my organizing the stuff. I'll let a few of you share what your thoughts are on that, and then we can do Q&A. Um, I also had a whole talk on organizing that I'm going to link up later um, that I did at a homeschool conference a few years ago, and uh, it goes into more detail of different like places in the house and things that we organize. But as far as the homeschool room, that's what I do right now. Um, Stephanie, you said you had a few tips that you thought would be helpful. Do you want to chime in? I have to figure out how to unmute myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, so, uh, first of all, I want to say that whoever said that they make piles, making piles is a valid organizational style. Yeah. It's not necessarily a good one. But it is an organizational style and I am a piler and I have had to learn to work with that. And one of the things I do is I either designate areas for specific things that are piled or I have containers where I can put things. So like during the summer, I, when I'm planning the curriculum for the next year, I have, um, if you've seen those Ikea um, bins that they slide into those little wooden shelves. I have one bin for each child and I put all the books I'm collecting for the next year for that child into the bin and they all sit underneath my desk. Um, and my desk is not in the homeschool room. I have it in our, in our kitchen so that it's like always kind of accessible to me. Um, so I keep all the books for the children for the next year because I buy tons of things used and I'm always like looking on my computer to, pull things so I can see what I already have. Um, also, Jenny, I keep a list in my phone of books that I need um, because I have too, too many books to keep a list of the books I have. So I can only keep track of the ones that I'm going to need to buy. Um, and I keep it in Google Keep. So if you have like an Android phone, because you can share the list with other people. And so I can share the list with my husband. And so if he happens to be at a used bookstore um, during his lunch break or something, he can pull up my list and look for me if he has extra time. And then also it's accessible to me if for some reason I forgot my phone, it's on his phone and you know, those types of situations. Um, trying to think of, oh, so books on, uh, we're going to talk about books later, so I'll save that, but um, the other things is all the manipulatives and like small things that you're organizing. Um, I keep them for the most part in our school room. I have a, it's a 
I put pictures of it in the Facebook group. It's a shed in our backyard. It's a, it was a one car garage and our actual home is quite small. It's about 1400 square feet. So um, when we first started homeschooling, we were homeschooling in the kitchen. It was very small and, and my husband teaches lessons from home for strings. So we needed more space. So we renovated the shed and it's been amazing. But so I have all the books we would need for homeschool purposes in the shed and, um, and it's climate controlled, so they're safe. Um, I'm gonna show you um, each, for like the little pens and pencils, um, I used to have just them out because I didn't have a lot of organization and <laughs> my children also don't have a lot of organization, doesn't fall far from the tree. <laughs> And so we would lose everything, like everything would be gone. They're very creative. They're always like making stuff. Um, and they are just not interested in putting, putting it back. So I keep all the extras in, in um, plastic bins underneath my bed in the master bedroom. And so like, I will dole out like your ration, <laughs> your ration <laughs> of pencils. <laughs> And so on their desks, they just have a little, this is my daughter's. So she has like her basics. Uh, she's a, this is the sixth grader or the almost sixth grader. So occasionally she needs a crayon and it's enough. I mean, she doesn't really need anything other than that. And we keep our art supplies in our kitchen because that's where we do messy projects. And then they're not um, accessible all the time when we're at school. Um, so, and then the manipulatives I was gonna show you so these are just like the giant peanut jars from Costco and they have lots of like food and things that come in these I save these and I just put whatever's in it I, I like that it's see-through because if it's out of sight it's out of my mind and I don't remember we own it um, but but the screw-on lid you know hard for the toddler so that's good um, and I think those are my main things. So I keep things in bins. The kids have their books in small bins on their desks. And then if we, like right now, my husband, he's a, he's a high school teacher at a public school. <laughs> and so he's teaching from home right now. So he teaches in the afternoons in our school shed. And so we only get it in the morning. And so anything we need to finish up, the kids just grab their bins and we go in the house. So portability is very important. So. Those are my main main tips. <laughs> awesome, that's so helpful. I love it. Yeah, that peanut container idea is fantastic. That's good. All right, who else has tips to share with us or things? Mimi's got some thoughts for us. Go ahead. Well, I was thinking that um, it would be a good time for me to share because I don't have a school room. Right. So um, this is, uh, we have lived in this house, which is what used to be my grandparents' house and we have 1800 square feet. And then I've homeschooled at what used to be my mom's house that had 3,500 square feet with a huge schoolroom. And we actually chose to come back to this house. Long story. But so we don't have our own particular schoolroom. So for us, portability is huge. Um, but we have always schooled um, kind of with that in mind. But I wanted to show you what we use because you can order them on Container Store. They are these little bins and they come in six sizes. This is like, I think it's, this is the large size. And as you can see, this is my son, Francisco. I already took out all of his stuff from this year out of it, um, except for their binders. So we use Math Mammoth for math. Um, and I chose to do it so that I print out um, their math every, it's like different sections. And so I print it out. And so he has a math, he has a math binder and it's all in here. And this is his math binder. And then how we organize our planner and how we organize kind of the way that we do is each child, once they get to about, I would say fifth grade, fourth, fifth grade, um, they get their own planners. Um, for many, 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 many years, <laughs> I was just telling Jenny this, 
I had one planner with that I had bought particularly because it carried four kids in it at all times because I never schooled more than four. So when my daughter started college, my youngest started kindergarten. So I had, I never had more than four, but for many, many, many years, I had four planners with my planner. And then as they graduated out, you know, around fourth, fifth, sixth grade, depending on the kid, they would get their own planner, but I would continue for a couple of years to have in my planner their stuff. And then I would just transfer it week to week. Um, but now they get their own planner. But the reason I share this is because all of that paperwork that Jenny puts under her bed, I put in this planner. Anything that um, from the book list, we used, uh, we use index cards with um, the title of the book. We use living books. So the title of the book and then um, their they have to put their name, the title of the book, and then each day that they're reading like a chapter or whatever, they put the date and then the chapter, the date and then the chapter and then the date and the chapter. And when they finish the book, they give me the index card. And these binders have these things. And I put the index card in here and I forget about it until the end of the school year. <laughs> and at the end of the school year, I hole punch them and I take these rings. And I take everything in the binder and in the rings, put everything, the ring in there, and then I throw that into a box because I am in the state of Florida and I have to keep things up to seven years. Wow. So, yes, my entire shed is boxes and boxes and boxes of paper. <laughs> when my daughter graduated from high school, we had a bonfire. I was like, woo, transcripts, we're done. Um, so I have to keep a lot of paper. But um, this is the easiest way that um that i can keep things that i don't have to constantly be um going from one kid to another so they know that that needs to go in here but it's funny because it's completely empty so my this is my rising ninth grader he keeps we keep a lot of these um the ones that have pockets so they'll keep the things like that and then at the back he has another pocket for his own things but this is kind of the way that i keep all of the paperwork together and then in here has the rest of their books. Uh, I got those binders at Staples. You can order it from online, um, Staples online. And these are the, I think they're called the everyday binders. Um, just make sure, because they do have uh, particular ones, just make sure that's the one with the pocket in the front. So that helps me big time when it comes to organization. Um, I have, we do have, even though I don't have a particular school room, I do have an extra room that's like a, I don't even know how to explain it. It's like a very large walk-in closet. And that very large walk-in closet is half mine and half my husband's. My husband is a law enforcement officer, so he has his stuff on half of it. And the other half is just bookshelves and bookshelves and bookshelves um, because we do a living books curriculum. So I have a lot of bookshelves. And in there is kept everything that I am either not using for the year or all of our like trade books, like literature, that type of thing that I'm not using for the year, things that the kids could go and look at. It also has a lot of my um, like drawing art, things that the kids can get into book wise, but that I don't need. Um, it also has um, a lot of the books that they would Again, not necessarily used this year. Then I have one large, very tall bookshelf in my main living room. And that is the stuff that is the current stuff. So every child has two of those bins. One of them is like extra stuff that they can put in. If it's a living book that they're reading or things like that. The other one has any workbooks that they're doing. So like my rising second grader and rising seventh grader both have spelling. So they have like a spelling workbook and um, they have their written um, narrations or I do a majority of what I do for oral narrations. I, th I, there is no paper for it. I videotape everything. I videotape everything. I have everything on Google drive. It's videotaped. I straight it straight to the Google drive and it's, there's a folder in my Google drive that says narrations by, by kids names. Um, and so I just keep it that way. That really does help if you, if, especially if you have like really dramatic kids that like to whatever, <laughs> that's a great way to like, you don't have to keep every single piece of paper. It's great. 
Um, so because I don't have a school room, I also don't have a desk for myself. So I keep two more of those bins that are my own personal things. And so I have a personal binder. This is mom's binder. This is mom's planner. Now I personally need things written out. Um, even though I can do things on the computer, my planning, especially when I start to plan for the next year for my kids, needs to be written out. And I am not naturally a very organized person, so having a binder is a good thing. <laughs> um, and so in here, I just, I just do, I literally just did this this year, this, this week. Um, I have my months of the year, and then for what I'm gonna do next year, so history, like just plain old paper, and then literally this is what Ana Maria, my oldest, that's gonna be a senior, I just sit down and write, okay, these are the classes, oh, this is Kikos, my ninth grader. What, what are the classes he's gonna take next year? What, you know, where is he gonna take them? Is he gonna do it from Home School Connections, or is he gonna do them at home, or what curriculum is he gonna do? Is he gonna do teaching textbooks? Is he gonna do whatever, math mammoth? I write it all down, and then, um, from there, I usually have, but I don't have my little kids in here. I usually have a list of like the, the books that I'm gonna need to like what, what Stephanie was saying, the books that I'm gonna need to either purchase or I'm gonna go shopping in my shelves. So yeah. once I get the books from my shelves for next year or what I know for the next year, it's going out of that room and into the other room. Um, that goes along with morning basket as well. I have a rolling cart that um, is where all of my morning basket books live. The entire year's morning basket books live there. So the second and the third shelf are just the books that I'm gonna eventually get to. So it, that happens a lot with, we read a lot um, of history saint books along with the year. So for example, we just studied American history I'll put all the American history saint books down at the bottom. And then as we read them, I'll just move them to the top. Um, I also keep on the top there, like draw right now or puzzles or anything they're going to be doing while we're doing it. But it's a rolling cart, um, which most times I'm just in my front room. Um, but for the most part, it's in the front room, but I want it to be mobile. So if I want to do it in the one room or the living room or I, it's, it's hard for me to put it on the other side of the room and then try to pull again from that. Um, I also keep things like American history or whatever book I'm doing for Morning Basket. Um, and then that just comes with me. My teacher's manuals are also in that book that I'm using currently on that shelf. Everything else gets kept uh, away. Um, I was, Jenny, you said something and I was gonna say something because I do it very differently than you do it, and now I can't remember what it was. But um, I, I think as, as we've developed, um, my children are very creative, as Stephanie was saying, and if I don't tell them where to put stuff, um, it, we disappear, books disappear, and that is my, oh, it's such a pet peeve of mine. All of a sudden, you can't find the spelling book. So that's why yeah. we do the bins. Oh, I don't remember what it was. Um, we do not, we don't have any individual anything in this house anymore. For many years, we did pencil boxes and we did cups and cubbies and caddies and blah, everything. <laughs> um, and what I realized was um, it was more frustrating to me. And then I had a couple of kids who took very big ownership. That is my yellow pair of scissors and no one else can touch it and then I had the kid that was like I don't know where my green scissors went so I decided that that wasn't what we were going to do so I have if you have seen the bins Nikki are from container store yes um if you have seen the the little plastic sterilite drawers mm -hmm. that okay those fit perfectly in those little cubbies that now like are super like the cubby shelves, the Ikea mm -hmm. shelves, all that stuff. They fit really well and they have three bins. So now I have everything in those. So one is pencils, one is Expo markers, one is Sharpies, one is tape, one is staplers, one is, um, so if you decide to, that you don't wanna do the, you know, everybody gets their own perfect thing, 
Mm -hmm. That is one way to do it. That's also an excellent way of cleaning up because when you say it's time to clean up, no one can say they don't know where things go. Right. So <laughs> I did decide that that was the way that we were going to do it. Um, okay. I also have, um, I have one brown set of drawers that no one is allowed to touch without asking mom, <laughs> even the 17 year old. Um, that has like the oil pastels, the really nice cray um, colored pencils, um, you know, anything that is, that, that I need to make sure no one else is going to get into. And that's okay. That, you know, we need that. Um, but also think about that when you go to organize that there are some things you do not want your kids to have access to um, when it comes to that. And so I, we have those drawers and everybody knows that that's not somewhere that should be touched on. Um, and our, I did a few, if anybody wants to know how I divide my books on the thread this afternoon, I literally like went shelf by shelf in my room. So yeah. you can go to one of the threads and see how I do divide my books. So cool. That's it. Cool. You made me think oh. of something that I didn't mention about, you were talking about your teacher binder and keeping all the yes. paperwork and planning. Yes. So yes. one of the things that's worked really well for me, I know everybody's like, how do you manage all the things? Um, school included, but being one of those plates that I'm spinning. So I have a teacher binder that has the stuff in it that I'm going to need to refer to throughout the year. But when I'm in my planning process or I'm just thinking about things to do, I use spiral notebooks um, to just jot down all the stuff that's ideas that I need to look up, I need to purchase, and it just like total. Um, and so I have different colored sp spiral notebooks for all the different projects in my life. So like I'm a president of a nonprofit, so I have a green spiral for that. And then I have a purple spiral for heart of a mother. And then I have a blue spiral that for household and I have a yellow one for school stuff. So I just keep those. And then what I do is it's just a running, like thinking, not really brainstorming because a lot of it is work. Like I'll make book lists for our history and all these things that I'm later going to input into my lesson plans, but I'm just making lists or I'm just making notes of things I want to do and not forget. And then as I do them and cross them off, once an entire page, you know, I've, done all the things or relocated that information, I just exit out. And if the front and back are X, I can tear it out. So like I, it's kind of my system of keeping my brain on paper because I have to have it on paper. My husband and I have a joke that if it's not written down, it doesn't exist. Um, and we'll tell our kids, you've got to write me a note. You've got to send me an email or text or something because I will not, you know, it's just, it's in one out the other. So that helps keep me ordered. Um, and so like Mimi was saying with her living books, I spend a lot of time, um, history in particular, of planning out which books we're going to read with which unit and that's all in that notebook and that spiral and so I go back to it until I don't need to go back to it anymore and then dispose of it so it's helped me but I do have a binder like Mimi does too. What else? Um, Jenny, I was also yeah. going to say too along with the lines with those binders it might be a really good idea and I used to do this when my kids were much younger and I hadn't gotten I've I've now done a lot of these grades oh, a lot a few times but what I did was, sorry, my son is going to sleep. Good night, Maximum. Um, the, I would put a, an index divider and I would put their names and I would put paper behind it. And then when I wanted to write, remember that I wanted Louisa to read a particular book, I would write, her, write the book in that particular um, section of things. Because a lot of times you'll get like a recommendation for some, and especially when you're on Facebook, you'll see like a list of a book or something. And you'll be like, oh, that'll be perfect for my son. Where do I write this to remember that? Yes. And if you do that in your, like in your like teacher binder, yeah. you can go back to it and do it. And then the great part about that, if you use a binder is that if you don't get it to that year, you can take the paper out and put it into the next year yes. or, you know, move, move it from year to year. Or if you really liked it, you can relabel the page. And instead of having the kid's name be eighth grade, and put it in an eighth grade thing. So just so that, I mean, this is paper wise, like Jenny, like you were saying, you and I are very paper wise. If you want to do that on something like a, what we were talking about with the Google notes or things like that. But if you have a place where either by grade or by child, um, you can, you can kind of um, put a note in for yourself. And then when you go to plan, especially if you're planning from scratch, it's a great way to do it. Yeah. My binder is sectioned by kid. 
Like I have the mom stuff, I have like some calendar stuff and some mom stuff, and then I have a morning basket section, and then I have each kid a different section. I forget what the back section is. There's something in the back that I always throw in. But yeah, super important to kind of keep all those moving parts organized. Awesome tips. Fantastic. Who else has tips for us? Or should we just Q and M? Amy, uh, you, Amy, you were going to share some things or, oh, Olivia, that's you. I'll, I'll share a little bit if you want. Yeah, go for it. Okay. So we have a ginormous house here in Maryland. And since in Maryland, we have several subjects that we need to teach. Um, I actually homeschool a little differently. I do a co-op that uses Seton. And so um, like my daughter Elizabeth's stuff is here at the table. She was working on stuff here. So everybody has their own individual pencil case and a backpack because we got to co-op twice a week. So a good chunk of our schooling gets done there. They have five class periods. So we get done religion, which is, uh, since it's Seton, it's Catholic. We have religion, language arts, which for the younger grades includes a whole bunch um, like phonics, spelling, handwriting, English all together. For the older ones, it's English with some book reports. Um, but so Elizabeth here has her binder and it has basically like this is catechism. It's got um, different dividers for different sections for whatever she's working on. This is English stuff. This is spelling or um, those kind of things. And then she, she has some math. And so that's all there. But she has her own st uh, stack of books and her different, <clears throat> I mean, Seton is very workbook based. And so really, um, I only teach on my own a few weeks at the beginning, normally, other than this virus. Um, and then we're twice a week out of the house. And so basically on the days we're home, we're doing homework. As they get older, it's more, but for the little ones, they don't have a lot. Yeah. Um, and it, so I started with some shelves here. These are Ikea um, Ivar shelves, which are very versatile and very, you know, cheap and easy, very. Um, so on the, the lower shelves, I have things for the little one. She's two and a half. So I have some puzzles. There's some letter stuff. Um, I have a globe. And then here they, <laughs> I had this great idea that everybody would have their own bin, but it hasn't worked out that well because everything goes in the backpack. <laughs> so they didn't really use these much. But then some of my stuff, like I do a little morning time too. So I would do any of my read alouds here. Um, stepping back, we have these great Ivar IKEA desks that are, um, they're wider than the shelves, but they're great because they're adjustable for height. So each kid has their desk and as they grow, we just raise up the shelf. And that's been really, really helpful for us. Although one of them got broken, my husband's got that on the list of fix. But we have this great big basement, so you know we can sit on the rug here. We can have reading time. There's a little old couch cushions in the corner. We have bookshelves here. My problem is I can't keep them in the same place at the same time very long. So, but I, I have all these great theories. Like, okay, here's going to be a nice little space for the little one. She's two and a half, almost three. So I'm going to put some things on shelves. I'm going to get some more shelves. And I'm going to do Montessori style, um, if not trays, then sections where she can pull stuff off, sit herself on the little rug, do something, and we'll just kind of trade off. What I'm probably going to do is trade off with um, the older kids. You know, you're reading to Annie this time. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I had a wonderful welcome to our homeschool sign. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Over there. And so I had originally our schoolroom was this fabulous built-in room. It had a built-in desk. These people before us, they had this great um, whiteboard and magnetic board and cork board built in, and they had shelves in the closet built in. So this got too small for us once we had the fourth one. We moved out to the big area. But um, so what I did was I bought these little cardboard. They're not very strong, but they just sit on a shelf. And so this has by grade level, first grade, second grade. We're missing some of them, you know, but that's in theory, you know, I've got some Bob books and some things that, because Seton is so comprehensive, everything is pretty much there. Um, I don't use a lot of this other stuff, but I have it handy just in case, um, you know, we get like, hey, we want some extra stuff. So um, that's, how, that's what's worked for me oh. is. It's great. You know, no, I love, the, I love that 
you pointed out that they have their backpacks and they keep mostly their books in their backpacks. I know a lot of families that do that, that either do a co-op and that's just where they store their books or they have lots of appointments outside the house. So everything just always stays in the backpack. I think that's- Yeah, they they find their own place to to sit. And I think it's hardest with my uh, fourth grader because she's my energetic, creative, sanguine child who doesn't see the point of most of the seat and stuff because it's boring for her. But sure, because sure. we're in a co-op, sorry, this is what we do. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, trying to find a space for her. Her desk, like this, like he has, is in my husband's office. So if he's working up there from home right now, she can sit there and do something. It's quiet, no distractions. Yeah. You know, sometimes that works well. Um, yeah. But, but yeah. oh, these are our bookshelves. We just, my husband recently decided he's my born organized type A. And so he has them organized. There's Nancy Jer and Hardy Boys, and there's, um, we have a, since Seton does a lot of book reports, there's a lot of the Saint books, like the Windy Out books, um, a lot of readers and things. And then board, my board books are down under here too, towards the bottom. So. Of course. Thanks. That's really helpful to see it visually. You're, again, you reminded me of something <laughs> um, when you're showing your, your child's binder. Um, my kids, um, I give them a, lesson list or a to-do list every week of the things that they're supposed to do that week. And they each have a clipboard and that list goes on their clipboard and stays on their clipboard all week. And that's where they check off what they did. And then I check their clipboards, um, the younger ones every day, but the older ones at the end of the week. Um, and so that, um, that's helpful for us and has worked, um, clipboards, binders, whatever it is. And then they have the older ones have a folder with their like other things because I print out a lot of syllabi and things for them. Super, super. You reminded me yeah. um, because we're in a co-op and I'm not assigning the work because the teachers there assign. We all use the same books, but each teacher has their own. So I actually have an individual notebook for each one. And as when they're little, I write it down. But when they're older, you know, she's writing her assignments down per subject per day and or um, for week or whatever. Cool. Since we're twice a week, Monday, Thursday, she might have Monday's assignments and Thursdays for this week. But then she's responsible to go through and get it all done. And so okay. that, that works well. Awesome, awesome. So much good stuff. Cool. All right. Who else wants has thought of things they want to share? Amy, I saw you pulling stuff out. <laughs> go ahead. Good. Um, so I'm going to do both. We homeschooled for the first six years with no schoolroom. And my husband is the my type A neat person who didn't want it to look like we actually schooled in our house. Which is really not easy, but that's that's what I had to work with, and we had a very small home, and that's what we did. So for a while, until about second grade, we used um, just file folder holders. This is like a cheap cardboard one that lasts about six months. Don't get the cardboard ones. <laughs> get the metal ones or the plastic ones, because those will actually last you a while, and you won't have to rebuy them every six months. Um, after about third grade, um, we had too many books to fit in there. So we, we tried upgrading to two file folder holders, but that didn't work very well. So we opted for the Ikea buckets that fit nicely on a shelf. And we had shelves in our living room with a door. So each kid had this bucket and it would go on a shelf. We could shut the door. So nobody knew that's where our homeschool stuff was and it just fit in there. Um, now it holds a bunch of math stuff. Um, we do, we, we do have a school room now and my three big school kids each have a desk in there. Um, my kindergartner does not have, there's not room for him up here and we primarily do his stuff in the living room. So I have a rolling cart and a closet down there. The top shelf is all his books and my teacher manuals for him. The second shelf is the math manipulatives we use. And since we do morning time down there, the bottom shelf is like the morning time binder planner with all the stuff we're going to do and any sort of materials we need for that and metal file folder holders, not the paper ones. Um, We keep art supplies in the kitchen because that's like the one place in our house with a hard floor so it's easy to clean up. Um, And then we have a room that we call the library. It's not like Beauty and the Beast as cool as that would be. It's very small. But um, one thing we have, you know, the kids books on the bottom shelf and they progressively get higher. My husband's, you know, college books and, you know, the Catholic church histories and the books you don't want your kids to read when they're seven or on the very top <laughs> shelf. But um, we, I organize, and then our curriculum books are upstairs in our schoolroom. Um, and the curriculum books 
there's a shelf for math, there's a shelf for science, there's a shelf for history. In the library, what I found is um, electrical tape. You can mark the spines of the books like this, and I can mark them by subject. So that helps the kids put them back where they go. So this is a history book. All the history books are blue. If it's American history, it gets a red stripe and a blue stripe. If it's science book, it gets green. So they can put them back where they go, even if they have no, they can't categorize that in their heads, but they can figure out by color where it goes. That works really great if you don't have a toddler that will peel off your hours of work of tape. So be what, be for my, you know, do that at your own risk. <laughs> And then um, I have the teacher binder that I have and it has, you know, my mom stuff and the assignment pages for the kids in it and the list of assignments they will do. And I also have a, a file folder that can go in a binder for each kid and I'll keep extra assignment pages that I'll do later or graded work that I want to keep for the following year, like their tests and stuff that I'm definitely going to keep. I'll keep it in there and then at the rest at the end of the year, I can just pull it out with their stuff. The kids each have a folder. We have done various iterations we have done binders that was too bulky we have done clipboards which was great when we were on the go a lot but it got really full with their papers because they didn't know what to do with them after i handed them back so this year we tried folders and the front of the folder is the stuff for me to grade and the back of the folder is the stuff i've already graded and they're supposed to put away which basically means i have to remind them five times because they don't know to do that but we're working on it and then in the middle part because it's one of those brad folders um, I give them a list, we call them ice cream books, and it's a list of books that are extra that I would like them to read, and then once they read six or seven of them, we get to go get ice cream because one of the places down here gives you ice cream after you read six books. And then there's an extra page behind that called a reading block, so they can read whatever they want. They don't have to read the ice cream books, but they don't get ice cream unless they read the ones I want, and it's kind of a way for me to direct their reading and also make it enjoyable. They can pick the ones they want to read, but there's an extra incentive to read the ones that I want them to read and make sure they get that extra reading that I want them to do. And then their assignment page would go in there for the week too. And then at week's end, they give me their assignment page back and I make um, a new one for them for the following week. For supplies, we have been doing the caddy with pencils and stapler and stuff for forever. The picnic caddies that, that, are, that are at Target right now in the summer section were great. However, like most things that are community property, nobody takes responsibility for them. So I'm thinking of moving away from that next year too. You each get your own pencil bag and I will ration the supplies as necessary. Um, and we'll see how that goes. <laughs> there's no perfect solution on that. No, there's not. <laughs> awesome. Super, that's awesome. That's really helpful. Good stuff, very good practical stuff. Okay, I know Liliana said she had some hacks for us, so I want to make sure she gets to share before we head to Q&As. What tips work really well for you guys? Um, let's see. Uh, I don't know if it's a hack, but um, <laughs> I kind of use this a little backwards than, I guess, the more um, experienced homeschoolers. <laughs> I'm not very organized, so we have piles until they get filed, but each unit or kind of represents each week and then so they're in a crate or whatever and then each so on the outside not in the manila folder I have like the planning part of that because all our stuff is online so I print it out and then you have theirs got put in a, a portfolio for the first unit just to show our state interviewer so each kid has a color and each file folder is a unit or a week and i guess if you wanted to use this in the way that you're putting their worksheets and tear out workbooks and put their worksheets in each individual one so the child can go in and i didn't put their names on it because i'm the one giving them their work anyway because <laughs> they're still little um maybe next year i'll have them with their they'll know their color or they know like you know, with their name to go in and pull out their work. Um, we might do that next year. Um, but I mean, that's pretty much it for this as far as like just filing the work. I love it. Very cool. Thank you for sharing that. It's great to see how different people kind of put this stuff in, you know, as long as you have it organized, many different organization systems work, but that's definitely key. Super. So, um, Doing okay on time. What? Um, let's 
you know, if you guys have questions or things that you thought of that works for you that you want to um, jump on, just unmute yourself, ask a question or share something with us and we'll. Um, I wanted to share one more thing that my kids love. Yes. Um, generally they, with their pencil bag, they have their own like pencils and scissors, but then the crayons and markers are community and actually markers are kept very far away because of my two year old. But <clears throat> One thing that they love because I'm cheap and I don't buy a lot of school supplies every year, I reuse a lot of what we have. They might get new crayons, um, usually courtesy of their grandmother. Um, but like I reuse binders and scissors and uh, any pencils that are still usable. And so I have school shopping day and, and I take their books that are for them because they each have their own grade level with their own books. And I set up a store upstairs. And so they get to get their backpack and they get to get it's their own backpack because they each have their own, but they get to pick out their federal case, which is, you know, their, and they get to, to pick out some of the things they get to pick out, but some of it is just, Oh, I'm getting my books for the year. So right before school starts, I always have a school shopping day and they just love that. They just think that's so cool. Even the biggest ones to go shopping. We get to have school shopping day. Are we going to have school shopping day this year? Mom? Yes. So they love that. Nice. That makes it fun. That's really cool. Jenny, I also thought of something liturgically that I have, and I'm sorry, I had to move out of my bedroom and to get to what I want to talk about. I have to go through my bedroom and my husband is going to bed, so I cannot show you. But um, for liturgical, I followed a blog many, 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 many moons ago, and she gave me this idea and it has worked brilliantly, is that I got 12 file folders. I just saw Liliana's and I thought of this and this worked out really well. And I put on the, on the front of the file folder, I stapled the actual month and then I physically wrote it in. You don't have to do that because there's plenty of file of liturgical months now that you could go out and find links and stuff. But then um, I had 12, those 12 folders and I put them in one of those um, plastic things that you saw that I use. And anytime I found like a coloring page or um, a prayer or something like that that went with a particular saint um, I would put it in the month of the saint and then I had file folders for Advent, Christmas, Easter, Lent, <laughs> um, you know all of that stuff and because what happens is a lot of times that will come up and so you'll have a resource for Lent that comes up in you know in at Christmas and so um, having file folders like that takes the remembering out of it because then when you get to Lent, you just have the file folder and you open it up and you're like, oh, look at that cool game. It also works really well from year to year <laughs> because um, if you don't have, and if you don't get to it one year, you know you can get to it the next year. Um, but I also, so I did that with the, with the actual month on the, in, on the outside. And then on the inside, I stapled up a um, piece of paper that had lines, like a filler paper. And I would put in um, like special things or anything that I would want that, a remembrance or anything. So that's how I ended up getting like food for different liturgies or anything. I would always put them in that folder. And then the seasons having their own ones was a great thing for us to use. So from year to year, it was a really nice organizational tip. Um, I would print things out instead of having to remember that they were on a thing. And sometimes I would literally print out like a website thing and then I would write on it, you know, it's on this website, blah, 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 blah. And I would go in and, and be able to do that because most of it is actual paper that you're going to have your kids do. We do it a lot during morning basket, but that way it was already divided um, so that I, you know, Our Lady of Fatima wouldn't sneak up on me. And it's the 13th of May every year. So like, you know, put it in the May folder. <laughs> um, but like the other days that we're moving, things like Pentecost and things like that, I could put into a seasonal folder and then it wouldn't sneak up on me every year. Um, because we use it a lot for morning basket. Um, it, I needed it to be just there. And then when I had time, which was usually 99% of the time in the summer when I wasn't thinking about it, um, I would do that. The other big tip that my daughter just told me, she's like, did you share your accordion? And I was like, oh, I have a kindergarten alphabet accordion. So what it is, is an accord the accordions that you buy like at Staples and it's got the alphabet, a, B, C, D, you know, whatever. It's a big accordion. Um, and 
when my kids are in kindergarten, they always, every kindergartner writes a kindergarten alphabet book. Now you can do it for preschool, you can do it for first grade, whatever your, wherever your kid is in. Um, but a lot of times when you're planning for kindergarten or planning for whatever, you're gonna run into things that are by letter. This is the best way to keep things organized by letter. Um, I don't, we don't start with A in our family. Um, we start with the letters. <laughs> we start with the letters that that write their names. So Louisa started with L, then U, then I, then S, then A. Then we started with P, and then A. <laughs> so we would go that way. Ignacio, for the longest time, thought I started the alphabet. He was convinced that I started the alphabet, and then he got even more confused because Ignacio, we call him Nacho, and he's like, "But my name starts with an I. Why am I just studying N?" It was really fun. But the accordion, back to the organizational thing, the accordion, you know, things like if you have, if you go to do a season and you do acorn and you really don't want to do it during the season, but you want to do it with A, especially for those of you that have really little or you're just starting with littles, it is a great thing for the older kids to be like, oh, go put it in the accordion for B or C or whatever. And then you have the accordion for forever. It also really helps if you use like a workbook and you want to have a workbook that has to have copies or anything like that, you can copy and put it straight into the accordion. Um, especially if you're preparing for kindergarten in the fall, do it in the summer. And then in the fall, when A comes around, you have everything in the accordion and you just take it out. Um, so the alphabet accordion for us was a huge game changer. Um, and then the other thing that I thought of is work boxes. And if you wanna look into work boxes, if you have littles that you need entertained, if you have any special needs children that need to have things to do in between the written or the sitting or whatever, and if you've never heard about work boxes, look up work boxes, Google it, look for it. Um, we used it for many years when I had a bunch of littles, when I had five under, when I had four under seven, and I needed things to do. Um, and I'm gonna about to start again with my seven-year-old, he's going into second grade and we're gonna go back to work boxes um, because I think it, it really speaks to his strengths. Um, he wants to do things independently. And so he can choose. Work boxes have to do with you know, doing things, um, doing particular tasks that are done by mom, you know, in order by mom. And they don't, sometimes they have to do, be done in order. Sometimes they can be done differently. It's not just a bunch of workbook pages. It is, you know, like games yeah. or whatever, but look into work boxes because that's another organizational um, just tidbit that for some people, especially if they have a, like a, a lot of littles all gathered around the same time um, would be something that could be very um, just advantageous to look into now and prepare over the summer to then start in the fall. And yeah, and the basic, I don't know, most workbox pe people, I mean, not everybody, because anything will work, use one of those rolling carts that have the like 10 drawers, those little, like you can get them at Joann's and stuff. And they're like the little scrap of paper drawers and there's just a little drawer. Uh, and so you'd put a different activity or a different thing for the kids to do in each drawer. So they know to go to their little work drawers and do their thing. Um, when I couldn't afford one of those and we did work boxes, I did a crate with um, f hanging file folders and I would just stick the things in those. Um, and we did that for a few years as well. Um, Mimi, Nikki asks, where did you get that accordion file? Is it something that... I was just, I have actually, it, it's, it's out here. I'm gonna show it to you. Hold on one second. Um, I'm gonna grab it. I, I got it in an office supply store. Um, I'm gonna show you what it's like so that you understand. It's, it's just alphabetized. Hold on one second. Yeah, I think I've seen some of those at office stores. Awesome, awesome. Um, well, she's getting that. Mm -hmm. Quick tip, color code your stuff per kid. I, I don't know if anybody said that yet, but like one kid is red, one kid is blue, one kid is green, one kid is purple. It will just make your life easier and theirs because they can find their stuff. It's just yes. a simple, easy tip that makes it so much easier. And I'm like, that's an easy one. I should probably tell people that one. That's good. <laughs> this no, is that's this good. is the accordion file. And and my this is my my seven year old is going into seventh grade, but we haven't put it away because my daughter spent her entire summer after her senior year 
putting together her brother's accordion file Aww. for kindergarten because she wouldn't be here when he was doing the kindergarten file. So she spent the whole summer putting it through. And when she came home, she's like, wait, he didn't do the caterpillar page. And I was like, really? Really, really sad. So um, we just, I, I, um, I was very lucky. I had a, a dear friend, Christine, um, who put her, her, she had a special, her last child is a special needs child and she, he had, she had to go into school. Um, so she, for her therapies and everything. So by the time that she had the last one finished with preschool and, and kindergarten, she had, she used to be a preschool teacher. She had all these resources, all these workbooks, all these everything. And she was like, just use them. And I was, my, my husband's like, you're not going to copy them. And I'm like, no. So I literally just ripped, we just ripped pages and pages and pages and pages out and just filled the accordion completely. Mm. And then um, we, they, each, each of my children has a really cool kindergarten alphabet book that they chose their best work. There's one particular page that's like a, like a, a uh, workbook that I've always used that has like A is for Apple, it, whatever, and they fill it in and then I laminate them and put that together and then everything else goes in the trash. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. No, thank you for sharing that. Very cool. So um, Jen, what, what Jenny, I have, a, I have like two more things that I thought of. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, seeing everybody's binders. I have a binder, but I don't write in mine like day to day. I set it up during the summer and then I just reference it during the school year. Um, one of the things I do that I find really helpful and I don't even look at it much, but it gives me like a big picture idea of the year is I color code the calendar mm -hmm. so that I know when all our breaks are going to be. And then I also have our trimesters that we follow for our curriculum. Um, and I do a lot of piecing together our curriculum. We use a lot of like Charlotte Mason things, but also other things. And so I divide things up during the summer according to those um, trimesters. Um, and then also, um, I think, Maybe it was somebody was talking about assigning books that they wanted their kids to read. Um, I get each of my children their own assignment book and I get the matrix ones that look like a teacher planner um, because I don't keep a master teacher planner for everyone at all. Um, during the summer, I make lists of their curriculum and then what order I want it to be completed in. And then at the beginning of each week, I fill out their that week of what's next. And I try to follow it to the point that we're gonna finish on time. Mm -hmm. um, and then I usually, so if we have roughly 180 days, I'll plan 165. And then if we need review days or sick days or, everyone's going to explode days. Um, we can push things around as we need to, but awesome. so like, here's the, the reader that our daughter was doing. I just do one, two, three, four, five for the number of the day and then put what pages she would read. And then when I go into her assignment book, I don't have to go grab all her books and see, Oh, what is she reading next? I just go down the list. For every subject so I don't have to pull out and look at all the books yeah so I don't so. want to get too specific on planning um I want to yeah sorry make sure we stay on this topic of stuff no that's good you've got to have a place for the plans but we're going to do some specific conversations on the actually scheduling and then the lesson planning and how we map all that out and keep that straight um that's fabulous that you've shown us that though I'm not stopping you I just want to make sure everybody okay. Um, knows we're going to talk more about how that's possible and different ways to do it because everybody kind of does that differently. Um, but yeah, that's you got to have that stuff somewhere. So keep it, you know, keep it in a binder, keep it wherever you're going to maintain it. Um, I do want there to be questions from people. So um, if you had a question or something came to mind that you are wondering about, you can type it in the chat box or you can unmute yourself or you can just let us know what. Um, questions came up tonight, if anything, that these wise mamas can answer? Um, I had a question, and I think I've probably been submitting a lot. I need to start writing it down, but now I'm, 
<laughs> I'm all over the place. I don't even know what Zoom chat I'm in right now. <laughs> Talking about, uh, organizing. I know about organizing, so I'm pretty sure I must have had a question about organizing, but now I just don't know what it was. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. Um, so thank you. I mean, I've been writing stuff down like, oh, okay, like that's a good tip. That's a good tip. Um, awesome. I guess I'm starting off. I think somebody said about like them husband not wanting like it to look like they homeschooled and being really limited. Um, no, okay, you got it. And, um, so I guess I'm just wondering, like, what, like, how, like, furniture wise, like, how do you, uh, I guess, like, keep all of that in one space? Because, I, I mean, I can't, for the life of me, I can't get my kids to put crayons back in their crayon box. And it's just community property, nobody takes is accountable for it. And so now it's like they want to color, and it's like, I don't know what to tell you. You have no yeah. brand. I'm not yeah. buying anymore. And luckily, grandmas and, and aunts and uncles always buy them color crayons in their, like, they got some in their Easter basket. So I'm like, Phew, okay. Yeah, I'll let, I know, I know Amy has some good tips and she'll share, but I think you bring up a good point that um, keeping the, having a place for the stuff is the first step, but it takes a long time to teach our kids. And actually, it never ends that we're constantly teaching our kids that this is where the stuff has to go. And, um, and like you said, there's harsh consequences. Like if you don't clean up the crayons then there's no crayons anymore. Um, you know, if it's com in our house, even community property or not, we do a cleanup. So, you know, at different times of day, we clean up when school is over, we clean up at the end of the day and they all clean up all the stuff. And if there's something out, it goes in the trash. I don't care whose it was. Um, mm -hmm. because I can't, I cannot manage all the stuff. We get a trash bag now. Does that mean that like it all goes in the trash bag and every once in a while I'll pull something out and put it away for like <laughs> next year and I'll pull it back. Cause like it costs a lot of money. Right. But to them it's gone. Mm -hmm. um, my husband is very much like Amy. He would like it not to look like we homeschool. Um, so I've always had to find a closet or a set of bookshelves or a space to put stuff in. And I've used a couple different things. Um, we've been fortunate the past couple houses we've had a homeschool room and he's fine with everything being in there as long as it's kind of on shelves or whatever. But, um, but I know that one thing that worked when we didn't have a homeschool room is I had bookshelves and I got a spring rod and I put um, a cur like a sheet curtain that I just picked up and made across the bookshelves so he couldn't see it. And as long as it was out of sight, he was okay with just the books. Like even now, the bookshelves that we have um, are too cluttered for him. Um, and I think he'd probably like it if I put curtains over him again, but if for him, if it's in the schoolroom, it's okay. If it's out of the schoolroom, it really needs to be really neat and tidy. Um, and that's what, you know, that's what we've done. Furniture wise in the schoolroom, we've always had lots of bookshelves. Um, right now we have cabinets, which I love because the doors closed, but we haven't ever had those before. Um, and then i mentioned at the beginning, those shelves that have like the, you know, the square, the box cube crate things. I don't know that where you put the fabric bin in them. I don't, what do you call this? We, ha we have a couple of those um, that help that help keep all the stuff away. Amy, what about you for keeping it out of your husband's sight? Um, what you said about cabinets. So we have the cube shelves and I don't know if you can see, maybe can do the bottom part has doors and that's actually where we kept their buckets of school stuff. Like the actual books lined up were fine, but like random workbooks and papers and binders was not okay or buckets. So the buckets went in the part that has the doors on it because, you know, out of sight out of destroying your husband's piece of space. Um, we, you asked, how do you keep it all in one place? We didn't. Um, so we had these in our living room, in our house with no school room. We had the caddy with school supplies in a shelf in the kitchen because it was by the kitchen table where we worked. I had a bookshelf in my closet with the extra school books that weren't for that season or were coming up or were between kids or extra ones that are nice I don't want them to get to but we'd like to read later that was in our closet for a long time the art supplies were in there too because it just didn't go there and then in the kids school room is sometimes where I had them keep extra books um I'm sorry it wasn't the school room it was the playroom because we didn't have a school room um so the books would be in there like the fun reading books would be in there with the toys so we did not it couldn't go all in one place. The nice, we do have a schoolroom now, 
the big kids keep their school books in their desk. My curriculum books are organized by subject. Um, the cube shelves help a lot, I think, too, even though they're messy, like just having the shape of the cube, I think, helps give the illusion of it being more organized than it might be. Um, and then the magazine folders can help make it look more organized, too, because you can flip them backwards and all you see is that blank white space. And then it's still organized for you, like these are the science workbooks or these are the extra math workbooks. So that can help, too. Just it's partly it is actually being organized and part of it is just making it look like you're organized. And pretending really, really hard. <laughs> I wanted to say, I wanted to say too, um, especially if you have a lot of littles, and I don't know if you do, but um, a, a big struggle that we had was that I wanted to put posters up, like maps and posters and things, and that wasn't going to happen in our house because we don't have a schoolroom. But what I did was I got three um, bulletin boards that were small. They were like um, like three feet by two feet. And I would cut things down to fit that. Like I would put two of those and pin things on, or I'd put one big map and pin things on. And then what I would do is that when I would use them, I would have them out. And when I was done, I would make sure that my bookshelves were a little bit off of the wall. And then I would slide the bulletin board right behind it. And I know it sounds crazy, but it does make a huge difference because if you roll them every single time, when you try to use them, it's really difficult to try to use a map like that. And so um, it's one of those things where it's up and then that way you can just take it out and slide it back in. Um, I know that other people have um, conspiratorially put the, um, the blinds, you know, the blackening blinds, the white blackening blinds that are on the, the dowels. Um, if you take the blind off of the dowel and you take tape and you tape the map to it and you roll it under, you can put it underneath a, um, a valance, put it behind a valance on a window, and then you can scroll it down <laughs> and then you can scroll it back up. Um, because it's a reality and it's something that we have to deal with with that because the reality of having to be um, I, I don't I hate to say it's like we're hiding it's not that we're hiding it's just that it's our home and we don't want our home to look like a school so um, but I know those two I've never used the rolling one um, that was a that was an idea from um, Jennifer McIntosh that she did when she before she had a schoolroom um, but the the bulletin boards for us was a huge huge weight off my shoulders because then I could take it out um, I, it worked really well for when my kids were little and we were learning things like poems or the prayers or something and I wanted them to see it but I had no way to take it out so you can use a bulletin board and then just move your little bookshelves out nice. oh, cool. Yeah, and I wanted to add that we, um, when we had to hide stuff in the house that we didn't have any room for it, the small house we lived in, um, my kitchen island, like the cabinets underneath was all school stuff. So it was, I gave up my kitchen cabinet space so that it was all in a cabinet that could be closed and all in one spot so I didn't lose it. And then we did the same thing as Amy. I had extra books in my closet on those top shelves that I don't use for stuff in my, in my bedroom because and under the bed bins um, for extra supplies, like Stephanie said. I mean, yeah, lots of hiding around here too. And it's, for, for us, it's, it's not like we don't want the house to look like a school. It's just my husband and I both like order and, cl and simple, clean, clean spaces, clean lines, and it stresses us out to see clutter. So it's important. Amy, you were going to add. Um, if you don't want to get a bulletin board, like a trifold poster board, can work to put posters on too, and they fit behind bookshelves or under desks really well. Another thing you can do, which is, I totally did this last year, uh, they make shower curtains with world maps on them. So your kids can like tricky, sneaky learn geography while they're getting clean. And you don't have to hang up a world map in your house because it's in the bathroom. <laughs> mm -hmm. Have fun, have fun. So I was gonna say, um, we do something a little crazy in our house. We have a hallway coat closet that we switched out the doorknob with a key locking doorknob. Mm -hmm. So we keep all of the like puzzles that we don't wanna be dumped out everywhere, all of the art supplies that we don't want people to get in on a day-to-day -day basis and all of that stuff in that coat closet and we lock the door and we put away the key <laughs> and that way people have to actually ask and request and then we know who took it and who's responsible 
to put it back. So that, that has helped a lot for us. Smart, smart. So. Nikki, do you have a question? I do. <laughs> um, so you have all the stuff at the end of the year um, for every kid. What do you do to organize first, second, third for each kid? Like, how do you keep it all, like, how do you organize all of that? Is it a filing cabinet or? So my, again, we live in Texas, so I don't have to keep anything really. But what I do, and then I'll let the other ladies share is, um, I collect it all up and I have some of those um, poly mailing bags that are like kind of the really big size. Um, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. It's kind of like a bubble mailer, except it's plasticky and there's no bubble, but they're kind of really big. I don't have one nearby. I'd show you. Um, and I put the papers and things in that for that kid for that year. And I will label it Joseph grade nine. And, um, I don't steal it. I just put a piece of masking tape on it cause I'm, I want to get into it. And then I have all of those in big, um, like the Rubbermaid storage bins that have a lid. I don't use a Rubbermaid brand, but whatever it is. And those are on the top shelf of my closet. So I can get like two kids K through nine in one bin because it has to fit in that poly thing. And I only let myself keep what will fit in one poly thing per kid per grade level. Now, growing up, my dad kept shirt boxes. Um, cause he was, you know, go to Brooks brothers or whatever. They used to do that and he had shirt boxes. So they were like, you know, kind of the same thickness of what I would keep. And he had one for each grade level of my year, my life or what year of my life. Um, which while sounds excessive and weird for someone who went to regular school, um, was incredibly helpful when I majored in um, secondary education and had to, um, do a cultural literacy, um, historiography on an individual I did it on myself because I had all of my papers and I could trace my own cultural literacy and I made a scrapbook it was so cool but anyway that's what I do what what do you ladies do I do very much the similar so again we have to keep things for an insane amount of years um, but what I do is very similar to Jenny uh, I have um, again from container store I'm a little obsessed they have these zippered large like 11 by 18 zippered cases. Um, they are a little bit bigger than what would be in um, like a mailer or whatever. These are kind of big. Um, and I, when they're little, because I have to keep so many workbook type things when they're little, I do have a few of them for each child. But then by the time that they're big, um, I kind of do that. And I keep all of their work that I want to keep for the year. I take a USB drive, uh, the smallest one I can find, I put it into my computer. I make sure with all their narrations, all their videos, all their written work, everything is put up onto the USB drive. Um, that's only going to work so much because it, they're only like 10 years or whatever. I, I don't need to keep that <laughs> past 10 years. So, but I put all of that inside that. And then I too have a rubber made. And then I take my planners, my particular things that have that, that is kept out. I have a cabinet that has all of my planners for the last 17 years. Um, and that is out so that I can see that. But everything that is the kids is put into that. Um, and then I try to keep it so that I only have a couple of years in each box. I have banker boxes, um, mm -hmm. the white ones from Office Depot. And so these things fit perfectly laying like this. Um, and again, I've never schooled more than four kids at a time. So I try to, I try to make it so that I can have two years in one box. Um, if I don't have, like when I had, um, when I had mostly like upper elementary and, um, upper elementary and, and high school, that was no problem because most of it was on the USB anyways, I wasn't printing. So I could just lay them out and then I would label them like with a huge thing on the side that said school books you know school things and then the years and that's how i i kind of keep things from that i don't um hold on um i do not keep oh fun huge moth um i do not keep a ton of like artwork and stuff i most of that i kind of take pictures of it yeah yeah well and i will i will just from our perspective where we don't have to keep anything i don't keep my lesson plans or anything like that or book lists or anything like that until they get to like seventh or eighth grade and then that's all digital because I have to keep it at that point so 
Um, anybody else want to answer that before we end? Because I think we are going to wrap up, Amy. Um, so I have a filing cabinet up in the schoolroom, and each kid has one of these big, like, hang file things. And then at the end of the year, I pull out the tests I wanted to keep, a writing sample or a few, um, the, a sheet with final grades if I'm keeping them for like maybe middle school and definitely high school, a book list of stuff they read, the course plan I made for them. So I have an idea of what the plan was before we started. And then when we get to the end, I might X out the stuff we didn't actually get to when I was planning things and it sounded lovely and wonderful. So, and then I'll, I had to actually use a binder clip last year for a kid. Like we had that many things, but that's really not that much. It's just, that's a stack of papers and grading sheets and writing samples and tests. And I'll keep a, an assignment sheet, a few samples of that to, from beginning, middle, end of year, just to kind of see what a week looked like. And mostly that's just for me and maybe for them, there's no reason for it other than I think it might be interesting in five years or something. I don't know. Um, but that's it. I need to get to the point where I have a box per kid because filling up the file cabinet is not working because then I don't have room to put the actual things we need to do school with. Okay, that's, that's a great question. I love that. Well, I'm going to have to wrap us up this evening because I know it's later than we wanted to spend, but this has been fantastic. And you guys can pop in the, um, the topics that have been going on in the group today. And all, all the questions that I pitched tonight are all a separate post, if you didn't see that, and you guys can dump that there. And then the last post this evening was, what are your other questions? So if you had a question that didn't get answered, um, that you can get a chance to ask, drop that in there, and I'll tag all these ladies to kind of keep an eye on that in case you've got something that you want to ask, especially to those of you watching this recorded. So our next talk will be on Tuesday about scheduling your day, kind of figuring out what the day needs to look like, and of course that's carries over into the week, but pretty much the day. And then um, the following week, we'll be doing some things about like actual lesson planning. And those of you that are pulling together your own stuff and are wondering what to do, that's when we'll really get into some of that nitty gritty and have plans for that then too. So thank you ladies for all your wisdom and for all your questions. Thank you. Really <laughs> thank you. Really nice. yeah.